thing. Probably because of the thing. Oh well, we'll go with it. Anyways, here we go. I'm starting this on bitch, so you bitches better be ready. And it's three. And two. And one. It's Sunday, July 14th, 2019. Uh, I'm Jeff. Who's your bear? That's right. I am your bear. I'm Damon. I don't brew the tea. I just serve it. If it's the proper year, I'm Gary. Don't hurt nobody with your bad self. <laughs> Welcome to Cubs Out Loud, the Bear Podcast, Vendor Terminal Links, episode number number 516 and uh i've only been awake for about 40 minutes so there's that um uh, but hard but what's always really good to wake up to is the daddy hadrian hello yeah so wonderful to be with y'all again uh uh yeah we got we, we got we got a thing we got a thing and 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 Daddy Hadrian is, is is our guru, so let's let's just jump right into it. Let's talk about sex. Oh. Okay, cool. So Gary, <laughs> what specifically are we talking about sex about? Okay, so we haven't done a let's talk about sex in a while, and usually when we talk about sex, Hadrian's involved. Because it's probably our favorite four way that we do here at Cubs Out Loud. <laughs> <laughs> Just saying. Uh, uh, hashtag no, truth. Detected. Yeah. <laughs> I also noticed that we put Hadrian on the bottom this time. So, you know. I, I didn't. He's, he's, he's been on the bottom before. Last time, I think he was below me. Now he's below Damon. So I'm just sharing the love. You Last know, time. Bunch square, I'm definitely middle. <laughs> Yeah, the only way we're gonna probably make that visually happen is if we get like another guest and then we do a five way. But you know, yeah, we have to. Uh huh. You, 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 keep, keep that idea rolling. <laughs> See if if we were able to get nine people, a, a total of nine. You know, that would be visually difficult because get, then we would literally look like the Brady Bunch. Oh, I really. Don't want to think about that part oh, right now. Wait, so you're saying in the grid that Hadrian gets to be like true neutral, like yeah. dead center? Dead center. Very thought. <laughs> Not that you've never been surrounded I'm like, by I'm AI. like Wolverine or... on everybody's team. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I'm on the Avengers. I'm on the X-Men. I'm on Fantastic Four. I'm, uh, I'm alternate universe now. It's, it's everywhere. He's everywhere. I'm Why sure not? Hadrian would be everywhere. Speaking of which, let's... So, here's the thing. This idea came up as a topic to discuss what porn taught us. And no sooner than the word porn is uttered, it's like rubbing the lamp and getting the genie to appear. Hadrian comes to mind because he is an individual who has multitudes of experience in varying ways with adult entertainment and so we thought let's have him back and have a little chat shall we sure so, for part one idea is uh what it's done to us when it comes to our brains and our hormones and here's where i'm thinking about this we okay. are a unique subset as a population group i believe i'm the oldest of the four of us and jeff is the youngest yeah. Uh, well, how old is Hadrian? Let's let's because that's I'm the one 40. thing I don't know. Ah. Okay. Yeah. Oh. Yep. I'm the youngest. You're older than me. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> me and Daddy Gary got you. 
Nice. Uh, <laughs> just, just keep in mind. Keep in mind. There's a gap between Gary and, and Hadrian. Meanwhile, there's uh, it's it's like I think the three of us are a year apart. Huh? Like <laughs> oh my god, Grandpa. Like uh, <laughs> I, I'm. I'm... Oh, I mean, it's oh, not oh, like oh. a huge gap or anything. No, it's a little gap. I'll have you we know that my gap is very small and tight. Thank you very much. So, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Why wouldn't you imply any other way? <laughs> Shit. If I, if I just don't He's know better, I would lady. say David is in California and he just experienced an earthquake and hates yeah. the one that's in Ohio because of how yeah. that just went down visually. Because Okay. <laughs> All right, so... But here's the thing. The reason why I want to talk about age real quick is we all came up in a time in which we did not have the technology <laughs> that's present today. So we did not have dial a dick. We did not have smartphones with apps. We did not have the internet the way it <laughs> exists now with chatterbait and live webcams, you know, and all that jazz. We mm -hmm. came up in which it was like the visual medium was, uh, processed trees aka paper or the beginnings of film and i don't mean like vintage like you know reel to reel because that's more probably my parents age you know stag films that kind of a thing but more like you know you went if you wanted to get that stuff like there was a whole underground kind of thing about it yeah you, know, mm -hmm. you would you would sneak into a family member's bedroom to steal anything you could get your hands on if the pages weren't stuck together. <laughs> right? And pray I, it's a pet house or a hustler because <laughs> it might have some peen in it. Yeah, that, that rare penis that would be in those. I, I had a little bitty, itty bitty piece of paper I ripped out of one from a friend's place. And it was just this this woman sucking a dick. And it, but it was a dick. I'm like, I got a picture. <laughs> that was a okay, <laughs> penis. Wow. Yeah. And this is the same stepdad who, like, he threw a uh, talcum powder on this pile of porn under the bathroom sink. So if somebody disturbed it, he would know. And he kept the powder. Because it was his powder for his neck when he shaved and everything. So he would throw it on there so he would know if somebody fucked around with his, his porn. So. What the fuck? Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Yeah, that was his security. Like. He didn't. He didn't want no one to touch his porn, so he like booby trapped it. Like, yeah. <laughs> well, there yeah. three boys in the house, and then you know, I was coming to visit. I was a neighbor, so yeah, we all came over to their place, and that's how we kept his porn secure. It was very flimsy. I, I, <laughs> well, I, I don't I was, understand I, how, how how you think this is like like mind blowing, inconceivable sort of thing. Yeah, I, I don't think it, this. I'm this sounds. This sounds clever. Is what this sounds like. I, I, I'm yeah, not I like mean, I'm not shocking to a nine year old though. boy. That was mind blowing. Like, oh shit, he's my, he's so fucking smart. <laughs> I'm not <laughs> knocking. I just think like what? I, I, why do you have to pr protect it so damn much? Anyway, but that's just me. <laughs> but okay, so for me, um, I actually had two older brothers, and so I had two brothers that were seven years older than me. No, not seven years. Few shit. Yeah, no, seven math years. is hard. They're both seven years older than me. Sorry, math. Math is hard. Um, anyway, um, so you know when they were getting to the point where they were noticing, you know, understanding porn, I was like in elementary, middle school, um, and we're also um, preachers' kids. So, and we lived in a neighborhood of like a of decent middle class. You had a lot of like different age kids. So you had like kids that were slightly older, kids that were slightly younger, and you could potentially you had access to like, you know, things because of the way because there's enough people that there's enough adults that have it already could potentially get it for you. Um you had you had that system. We had a system. Like you had like the seventeen eighteen year born and then like who you're reading it like like selling it or whatever. Actually, maybe he did. He might, might have have sold it. Like sell the magazines to the younger kids for like you know three four dollars so that they can then 
do whatever, jack off, I don't care. But you know, there were there was access like somewhat readily available. And so so you're yeah. saying uh in your staccato way because you have a really bad Skype connection. Um what? that uh, yeah, we were hearing like practically every other word, but that's beside the point. I think we got the gist. You're saying that your older bro- brothers basically uh, uh, did did like paid hand me downs of their poor. Mm-hmm. Yep, I yeah. don't think that's all yeah. that impractical. I mean, that's to my impression of like the 50s, 60s, 70s, hell, even into the maybe the 30s and 40s. Like, porn was communal. It wasn't like today where people have, you know, multi-terabit drives of, you know, shit they've illegally downloaded from servers or, you know, whatever. Um, so, I mean, that, that, that kind of doesn't surprise me in a way. I'm pretty sure when I was in college, even though this wasn't part of my thing, people were swapping VHS tapes back and forth. Mm -hmm. Um, so I had my own stash. I didn't need nobody else's. So plus I was also out, but private, like, so plus my taste in gays were different than the other gays. I figured out quickly. (laughs) So, um, so the the thing, go ahead. When you're going to news groups, like alt.erotica.mail.chubby. Uh, as your source of your initial porn, it kind of came up right away pretty quickly for me. It was just the actual realization of sexuality that happened later uh, for me. Right. I, 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 I'm a child of the the internet, so oh. ah. I, I'm like like pre millennial, but not quite millennial. That's how I feel as well. I, I was in. I was. I got to experience a lot of the old school porn trade. As some, of the, some of the seniors were aging out when I was a freshman. They would hand off their porn, or they turn eighteen and they buy porn for us and that sort of stuff. Or trading, you know, infiltrating the trade of brothers, older brothers handing down. I knew a, a lot of kids in my neighborhood were multi generational, and I just happened to be friends with the younger generation. So I'd find out about it, and I would say, "Hey, what can I do to be in on this?" And they didn't want to get porn out of that circuit, I guess. I don't know. That was really hard. So I always end up with like the really gross discards, like granny fuckers 20. Um, <laughs> so, wow. But um, there, I, I had uh, some run-ins with uh, really good porn stashes that I got to uh, partake in. Mm-hmm. So, so that was, that was a lot of fun. I, uh, uh, you say porn I, stashes. And the first thing I think about is the porn mustache. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, uh, I may just be weird probably, that yeah, way, yeah. but that's what that's what that's my first initial. I'm like, wait. I mean, that was a oh. thing probably back then. <laughs> the mustache that hides the tattoo that says "Bow Chicka Bow Bow," <laughs> something like that. <laughs> oh, I thought it said "Insert Here." Ooh, that's the gigolo mustache. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So the, the the history of our experience with porn, I think, vastly affected what we got out of it. Yeah. Um, when you had a, a, a 2D image that was static, that did not move, you filled a lot of gaps in. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Take gaps however yep. you want. Um, <laughs> you know, the, the truth is that you, like, either read stories, you know, had erotica... Ooh. That might have some imagery with it or not. Or you had, you know, like a photo spread. And you kind of filled in from the first image to the last image. And then the other static ones in between where there was less clothing or different body positions or, you know, different things that were done within the same environment, potentially. Um, I think that that really affects how you can see yourself doing what these things are because i think that's what porn naturally does is we visually take it in as a stimulus and then we imagine ourselves in said situation if it was if we were with these people or replacing one of these individuals let's say or replacing the individual whichever the case may be and i think that when you have the medium now where 
heck, there's 3D and VR and, you know, the newer stuff that's coming on, which, no pun intended, uh, will take a while to really, I think, process. I think that, you know, you, you don't have to do as much in terms of your imagination. Mm-hmm. What do you think? Yeah. Know, like... I, uh, my first experience with porn, I, th- there was something about porn that just seemed so artificial and gross. It was, a, it was a low production value, and I was a cable kid. So porn just immediately looked really unbelievably tacky. And yeah, the sex was good, and it was easy to focus on that. But even the way they treated women and the way people would act, and it was also, it was also distracting. I had, I've always had a hard time connecting with video porn unless it's really authentic. I almost prefer to watch a rated R movie that gets a little, or an NC-17 movie that at least attempts to have a plot. But um, I, I am really, I am really story, situation, world building. I am so driven by the ritual of sex, almost, that the actual act can mm-hmm. be complimentary. I get it in, out, repeat if necessary. So um, As necessary. I know, as necessary. Thank you. I was so, like, so, it so, if and so desired <laughs> <occurred. laughs> <It's> white peaks. <laughs> Wait, did you just say to the appropriate frothiness? Frothage, yes. Uh, Froth- frothage, oh yeah. man. <laughs> no, it's it's not yeah. frothage. It's frottage. <laughs> well, right. well, that well that too. But, desired yeah. frottage has occurred. Nice. So anyway, um. I don't, I never, I never, I have always had a hard time connecting with porn. Even the earliest contact I had with porn through uh, some, some uh, twins that were in, uh, in Boy Scouts with me. They're like, hey, we have porn. We're going to trade for it. And I traded like a Ninja Turtle or something for it. And, um, <laughs> you know, it was just, it was, I, I got to look at this stuff and I'm like, okay, great. It's a girl with her legs spread and possibly wide. And that looks really uncomfortable. And aren't they cold? And all the other questions you have about what's going on in the scene, this answered nothing. Yes, I was a I was a kid that read a lot of books. <laughs> I was I was having a very hard time connecting with 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 the imagery it was being sold. But the first time I ran into erotica, mm-hmm. I lit up like a Christmas tree. Or the first time I got a hold of a Playboy, at least they tried. So I I've always and BBSs were a gold mine. Of course, there was no there was no there was no images. Downloading an image took four hours on on you know a fourteen four modem. So. There was a lot to read, though, in the BBS. Is people talking about their sexual encounters, you know, logs of the, what they were doing with their wives and, you know, mistresses and stuff were always really fun. It was always so lurid and, and real. Even if it was total bullshit, it was still fun. It I gave was, me something to whack off to. I was I, I so happy with the 28 Right. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> I downloaded a book 15 seconds faster. Um, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so here's what I'm curious about is, like, now that we have the the maturity of our age to look back, how much do we think or can we recognize we learned? And learned is a very loose term here. Like uh, absorbed, indoctrinated, uh, whatever you want to say. You took it in and you thought, presumed, whatever the case may be, that that is how the sex happens. Like positions, interactions, um, even like Hadrian from the sounds of it, like you've you've talked before openly about that you like reading, um, and that erotica is a big thing for you. So I can see that there's like a fantastical kind of aspect to sex, where I don't like the thing is for me is that porn sells us something, but I'm not really sure how often it gets it right. Porn, I, I believe that porn is first and foremost always supposed to serve education. Mm-hmm. And they definitely get that part down. Like, here's how you do it. It is, it is art, entertainment, and it's supposed to have some sort of educational value, just like any piece of art does. Every art in the world has some sort of educational value, apparently. So, um, but in, the, in this particular place, the case, they're definitely demonstrating how you're supposed to bond, how human beings can interact and lead to copulation, I guess. Um, but other than that, then I guess it's supposed to be art on top of that, and then that's where the rest of that comes in. 
but it, it's that they they are so supposed, so supposed to be selling a fantasy as well and I'm, i always wonder what that's supposed to what's that supposed to mean for um what that's supposed to mean for i'm sorry i lost my train of thought there <laughs> It's okay. I saw, I saw this K over here. I don't know what I got a chat window. It popped up. It's okay. <laughs> Welcome to the world. Welcome um, to my world. The the thing is, is that I agree with you. Like you know that there's there's the, um, I guess the one physical aspect about it about procreation. You know, in theory, sex is about insert tab A and slot B. Done. Um. And in some animal species, it is literally seconds. For others, it's much longer. Yeah. Um, and we, as the human species, have the opportunity and the option to choose how long we want that to, you know, go on um, within Sometimes. physical limits. <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> well, you know, that's why some people decided to invent things called little blue pills, apparently. Um, so... <laughs> so the... The thing for me is that, yeah, like there's the, there's that base kind of level of stuff. But then, you know, like you were saying, Adrian, there's other parts of it, like as to, you know, the art, the, like how it looks and, and that kind of thing. I, because I grew up, I don't want to say sheltered, but like everybody's situation is unique. So I want to start with that as a preface. But my dad collected Playboy magazines, like my whole life growing up. But my dad didn't collect them really as like whack material i mean there was some titillation to it i'm sure for him but my dad actually was seriously collecting them mm-hmm. and so he, he sounded like a classic gentleman like gentleman it's a gentleman's magazine that he collected right and so he collected the first 50 years all the way through the 50th anniversary and then just kind of like stopped at that point and sold his collection off and stuff so there was always kind of like porn around but it wasn't, you know, necessarily as titillated or whatever. And I always mm-hmm. found it far more interesting when he'd like buy, buy, sell, trade. And he would get like Cherry or Hustler or, you know, something else. Or, God forbid, somebody snuck a Playgirl into the stack of like stuff that you got sold. Um, <laughs> you know, so you're in the garage, like, you know, looking through the pages and stuff. Um, but like for me, it was my educational outlet. Because Lord knows the public education system did nothing for me. When fifth, sixth grade came around elementary school and they decided to have the talk, all the <laughs> all the presumed females went into the, you know, auditorium type theater gig. All the boys went out and did recess. That's how that was handled. Oh, wow. Really? It was gender separated recess. Absolutely. No. Well, oh, God. we got recess. The guys got recess in lieu of all of the women, quote unquote, the girls, going in and watching the film. The, oh. the classic, like, let's the talk about effect. how a baby happens and what Menzies is and blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and we're going to give you your first maxi pad, apparently, to take home or some shit. I don't know. Like, oh, my God. I never know what the hell happened because obviously I didn't go. And But the boys got oh. nothing. Whoa, really? They gave you, you didn't get money. anything. Nope. No, no, wow. sex education. not even the basics. No, wow. My, so, mine hey. was all very clinical. <laughs> yeah, we got so I remember because it was, it was because it's like burned in my head because there was a there was a there was a series called Family Life, and it was essentially this series that you when I then this is like like fifth, I'm believe, swear, fifth, sixth grade. That was the whole like introduction of like the talks and sex and what have you. Not and I mean these videos were awful. I I mean I can't visualize what they were, but it was very much that whole like old eighties like well kind of like porn sounding kind of like background noise and them talking about like this is what like this is a penis, this is a vagina. This is the menstrual cycle. This is like family, you know, and then because then went into like the family, like how families are created, when babies are born and all that stuff and talking about like puberty and the, you know, all that stuff. I remember all of those conversations in these videos and they ha- it happened in fifth grade. It didn't happen again in sixth grade and then it happened again in seventh grade and then they stopped. So apparently eighth grade when you're like 14, a teenager you don't need to know anything more about sex because you've had three years of learning about it. 
that and they planned it that way. It wasn't like because of budget cuts or yeah. You know, some shift as in, far as I know, wow. <laughs> as far as I know. But I remember those like awful. It was Family Life, and then it was something else, and I can't remember what it is. And it was the whole like you had to get the permission slip signed by your parents so that you can do it. And never if you had to worry about that. Yeah, didn't get it signed. You couldn't be a part of it. So those kids that didn't get the sign, those are the kids that went to like study hall or recess or whatever. Hmm. Yeah, I, I I think of mine uh-huh. because I never had the whole like permission slip thing when it came to to any sex sex ed. And now that I think of it, the only thing was uh, information about reproductive organs and how they work, and that's about it. Oh my god! So I don't remember if they the the uh, uh, girls ever got like women's hygiene classes or anything separately from us men, but uh, <sighs> it was it was very it was very uh, I would say it's very it was very clinical. Yeah, and and the sexes were separated as well. I just also also now that I think of it, I never actually got the talk. You I actually pro- he never sat you down and said, "Hey, you know." Mm. Nope. <laughs> nope. That's what my did. <laughs> like literally oh. with a pen and their fingers. Like, yeah, she was like trying to be like a professor, like trying to demonstrate. I'm like, not really. <laughs> wow. With the yeah. floral pen. <laughs> and what's crazy oh, is my sex ex- both- education was porn. <laughs> Right. Well, that's really? kind of like no, that's where I was, parents were just aware that you had already found porn, and they're like, "He's got it." <laughs> no, I don't think that's the case because they weren't happy whenever they found out that I was looking at porn. <laughs> right. Like that's. But that's... they had never given you the talk. What did they just think you were going to stay like a little boy forever? No, I think I think he's like he he he, he probably will get it just fine. He, he's smart <laughs> enough. There's there's cool. a lot of parents out there who have had and maybe still to this day have that mentality like well they'll figure it out yeah like okay so totally that so like <laughs> that's why I did the classes because my parents sure as fuck weren't going to talk about it because that's just awkward I, like that was so awkward like, because I have so I have I I would totally do the friend. talk for my sister for my 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 soon to be step nephew if necessary. Yeah. Although knowing my sister being a social worker, she probably would be able to take care of it just fine, or have her her soon to be husband to do it. Right. See, I I don't remember a time where I didn't know what sex was. I've I've always been generally aware of the functionality and the weird secrets and the closed doors that were always going on. Mm-hmm. So I don't. I my my mother did have the talk with me several times at, at appropriate you know stages to say, okay, here's what's going on. It's just very private. Let the let the let the people have their their private space. Don't come running in once they're done. Um, because I would have like, are you guys done yet? Because I want to come in and cuddle. And it's like, no, 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 it's sticky. So um. <laughs> So that's how wow. my, mother to, my mother had to have those talks with me to establish personal boundaries. I was an only child, so I didn't have siblings to teach me these sorts of things. So personal boundaries was something I didn't learn until a little bit later in life. So that's how my mother had to do those. Like, okay, this is a private space right now. And then she would do it as I got older and say, okay, she would explain it in appropriate resolution until I was about was I 12? And she's finally like, okay, this is a penis and a vagina. And she sat me down with books and pamphlets that she had gathered from private Planned Parenthood. So I thought I thought it was very appropriate, but she was very much with the pencil and the pen, like trying to explain it to me. And my experience is not like Hadrian's at all as being an only child, even though my mother was an RN. Yeah, no, that that was not how it was handled. My parents apparently both thought that the other one was going to tell me or have the talk with me, like that the father should talk to the son. But then my mother's the clinical medical one. Like, yeah, that's not. So you pretty much had, did you talk to him about sex? No, <laughs> did you? No. Like, like, <laughs> well, oh, well. Like, he's, he's a boy. Out. He'll figure it out. <laughs> he's fine. <laughs> so like. He's I just a like, fat boy, like, you know, who's quiet and likes to read. He's in the <laughs> band. He's never going to get laid. You know, like. <laughs> <laughs> Little oh, did they know how much he would actually like, get laid. Oh, yeah. Like, I learned, I learned about, I will say I did learn about sex through, like, those classes, quote unquote, technically. But I learned about, like, sex from porn, if that makes sense. Like, I learned the, right. the, the. 
the whole like clinical aspects through like those classes. But to me, I learned a lot about like what actually can and should be happening through porn. You, you, you learned about the natural intent of mm-hmm. sex right. uh, uh, through those classes. And yeah. you learned about uh, uh, what we actually do with sex through porn. Well, but here's the thing is like something that Damon just said that is kind of one of the things I want to touch on at some point is porn teaches intentionally or unintentionally. And we absorb so much from it. And I find it very interesting now more than ever. I go online and I see all these naked men and it took me till I'm in my damn forties to I'm like, wow, look at all these dudes with all these different kind of bodies, with all these different kind of like genitalia, like all this different stuff that's out there. Cause that is not what I was getting when I was younger. Mm-hmm. They were very much following certain model like lines of visual that I was like, <laughs> okay. Like apparently I have to have a six pack. I have to have a tan. I have to have glistening white teeth and perfect hair. I have to look like I just like walked off a GQ model, you know, of something or other or a Benetton ad. I mean, it was just, it was kind of crazy. It wasn't a, a variety. <laughs> yeah. It's I just... think that was the thing. I don't, was... no, no, no. I, some of the early, some of the early magazine porn I happened to see was personals. It was something I had gotten early on. It was like some kind of, it was from Toronto area that somehow ended up in Georgia from one of my neighbors. And it Truck had driver. these personals ads and it was people with their own Polaroids in black and whites on the, in this magazine as you turn the page talking about, you know, who they wanted to hook up with. And I thought oh. that, was, that was insanely more interesting to me because it had this little blurb about who they were and what they were looking for with this really awfully lit, grainy black and white photo. Oh. Now see, for me, that was the Bear Magazine classified ads in the back right exactly <laughs> and some of the hustlers and the playboys would have those kind of personals in the back yeah. and occasionally they would have photos there as well mm-hmm. yeah i was so, so yeah i so mean the, the, the representation okay. that i was looking for i often found there i didn't find it in the main pages of, of porno i didn't find it in the the chisel ads and everything the clones that we saw and, and you know whenever i did finally see a gay magazine i'm like ew gross really i don't know what to, i don't know how to achieve that um, mm-hmm. But in the personal sections, it'd be like, you know, every now and then you see like, you know, generous daddy looking for, uh, you know, 18 to 21 year old in New York City or something like that. And the personals added. And you're, you're like, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Interesting. Yeah, I do remember those. I remember. The, yeah. So <laughs> the one thing I wanted to talk about, because I haven't had a chance, um, the, the thing I wanted to really talk about, because I remember like. Does anyone else like remember like Skinamax and and like HBO After Dark, and 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 for those of us you know with the cable generation, especially in the eighties, like Channel ninety nine or ninety six or whatever, that was like the it was static. It was like the porn channel, like Adam and Eve or whatever. But it wasn't like you did. Your parents obviously didn't buy it because, God forbid. But mm-hmm. like you would, I remember because it was so static. You not staticky for me. It was like squiggly, so you could see images as they kind of cleared up, like on occasion. Like, yeah, I remember yeah. being being like a child and watching that too. Like, yeah, because just you, listening, you, listening to the yeah, moon. You got I'm, the sound. You got <clears throat> the sound. Yeah. See, the only thing is, at that time, I was more of of. Uh, one, the internet was just starting, and I was racking up our prodigy bill, and <laughs> uh, it and really, that's the days when I would wake up early at like six o'clock in the morning so I could watch Ronin Warriors. Oh my god! Yeah, I was a nerd through and through. Well, I still am. And see, I mine was vastly different. I. But one of my favorite things about like magazine porn was the penthouse forum letter section where people would write in and tell quote unquote true stories of like dalliances that they had. And still Here, to this day, forum. you won't believe what happened but to me, <laughs> right. but it, to me, but it's totally true. But sure. that's the thing that I've realized that I like that I glommed onto. Like that was the thing that I really, because the whole 
I found it like very titillating, like exciting and and like the mystery of the intrigue of like, you know, the two neighbors hooking up or the plumber or, you know, the mm-hmm. pizza delivery guy or the, you know, retail worker in the bathroom at the, you know, or hooking up at the gas station and getting a blowjob through a hole in a wall. I mean, like I always found that like fascinating because I was kind of like like that was always like chance encounter meets mystery and like there's there's another element to it you know the well most likely the getting caught aspect Mm -hmm. you know about someone seeing or finding out or whatever and so that was the thing that mostly intrigued me and that's probably why i found video eh, it was okay you know it wasn't really until i was in college and i started moving beyond buying bisexual porn you know with both men and women in it because i was trying to not make it look i was like i was super gay um (laughs) and then you know once i started seeing the imagery that was being put out there you know and and the predominance of the jack radcliffe you know model type i was like oh okay and i kind of planted over him like paper doll kind like he could be a lot of things like he could be leather daddy, he could be a mechanic, he could be a plumber, he could be the UPS delivery guy giving me a nice big package, he could be, <laughs> you know, a chef or a cook. I mean, like he in, in a what an interesting way is like he epitomized a lot of different fantasy concepts if you really wanted to. He didn't mm-hmm. he was understated in some ways, but also that being said, you know, it just it kind of became this thing. But yeah, because I didn't have the talk necessarily and those you know sex ed classes that kind of stuff porn was the way that i kind of learned how things happened Mm -hmm. but it also led to a oddly unexpected dramatic moment in which i had like my first sexual encounter with a person and it was a guy and so we you know fool around and we give each other head and he gets off and he says afterwards it was like the best head he ever had mind you we're like what 21 like so <laughs> oh time my. is relative time time and experience are relative but mm. he's and then he says to me he's like where did you learn that and i was like well, what do you mean where did i learn it and he's like well who taught you that and i was like nobody taught me that and i was like it's just like that's just how you, you got to be like it. Oh, natural i don't know what you're well i wasn't about. talking about it like you know i just was like that's just oh like, i was <laughs> <laughs> they said, you are so good at giving head. And I'm like, like, I yeah, I know. didn't do anything special. This is just how well, I naturally did it. So that, that, that self-esteem, that confidence for me came later after a couple of individuals said something along similar lines. I was like, oh, apparently I have an innate talent for this. Good to know. <laughs> Fat boys like to eat. They like to do things with their mouths. Don't forget that. So, you know, and that. Love it. <laughs> but that was the thing is we we had an argument about that. We just had sex naked on my dorm room floor. He came. It was post coital. It was nice. And then we got into an argument because he didn't believe me that I had never given head in my life and had never had like a blowjob myself. Wow. Oh my God. He your virginity. Well, it wasn't so much that. It was the it was the the talent issue. That was the part that was the, the You cannot issue. be this good without some experience. <laughs> like right. what he, what he was Did to he say. feel did he feel insulted and challenged? Was it did he feel like he needed I, to up his game? I honestly think so, Hadrian. Because I, that was I, that was I the beginning back. of us that was the beginning of us quote unquote dating. But we weren't ever really dating, I figured out. I thought we were dating. He never thought so. Um, he was in the theater program. He apparently was very popular in the theater program. Uh, right. And I found out about that and I was very upset about it. And he was like, first of all, we never said like that we were really dating, dating. Second of all, we never said we were exclusive or monogamous. And I was like, like, I just, because I you didn't have the concept of non-monogamy at that point in time. What I Maybe, had possibly, uh, I don't know. I had the Americana, like. You're going to be a couple and you're going to have like two point, you know, five kids and a dog and a cat and a perfect house and blah, 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 blah. So none of that was on was on my radar by any means. And he, on the other hand, was like, dicks are yummy. I will take all of them. And, oh, no. <laughs> and yes. there's, 
nothing wrong with that. He is still a sex pig to this day. We're friends online, and I don't know if he knows I follow his Twitter, but I do. <laughs> and, you know, I'm proud of him. I'm like, you go. And uh, he at... <laughs> <laughs> So to be fair, everybody but, on this podcast is is slut encouragers. Uh, I'm not going to disagree with that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that's that's a new slogan. Comes out loud podcast. We are slut encouragers. Um, <laughs> but but for me, that was like that was a very interesting experience. Like I was like the whole time I was like, I don't know if I'm doing this right. I'm not really sure. Like I am. I am trying so hard to go through the visual, uh, like a uh, like uh, reference section in my brain of everything I had ever seen in reference to dicks and to men and to sex, and was like putting it all out on the play field because I was like, I don't know what what is what. I don't know if any of this will work. And then when I found out it was good, I was like, okay. So apparently, I've been doing research for like I don't know six seven years. <laughs> <laughs> like, not that this is a master thesis presentation, but all right. Like, so you face rolled the keyboard and hit all the buttons and just made everything happen. Just to <laughs> see something would stick eventually. <laughs> so it's like a I mage rolled, in World of Warcraft. I rolled <laughs> right. a natural twenty, and I didn't even know what I was doing. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, it was it was a really interesting thing, but it was also troubling in a way because. Like, well, it was awkward. It was more awkward for me. I was not really experienced. And then, you know, you, you're you still, like, processing all of that. You know? Mm-hmm. Like, I, I didn't have the, we're just two people trying to figure each other out. You know? Like, and, and the fumbling and the awkwardness mm-hmm. and, and everybody's kind of on the same page and cool with it thing. Mm-hmm. And that's a bit of a mindfuck because nobody's like that in porn, really. I mean, even in amateur porn, people have some experience. You know what I mean? Like what you're seeing yeah, is nobody's nobody's have having their first time in front of a camera. Well, although that would be interesting. Um, <laughs> so, to all you actual virgins out there, record your first time. Ha! <laughs> Because no. you could also, okay. No, that, so, we now, don't need this fumbling <laughs> towards ecstasy. We really don't. So, so <laughs> here, a here's a thought. Here's a thought for for <clears throat> all you uh, uh, the uh, virgin kids that are looking up this podcast because you're trying to learn, figure some stuff out during your first time. Record it, and here's why: not necessarily to post to the internet, although you know, I'm sure somebody would be interested in that. Uh, but um, because then you can review the replay. You know how how like in in sports they watch past games to to learn to figure out what they did wrong in the first place uh, for for any bad stuff or good stuff and be like, okay, he really liked it when I did that. I'm gonna do that again. Then you can actually analyze your sex. Yeah, just everybody should have cameras, cameras in the rooms, just so, everywhere. So they can, no, can do sex no, analysis I, every single time. It's not like everybody already has a camera in their hand. I I <laughs> not watch my own porn ever. No, no, I really? cannot. I would not review any of my like. Oh yeah, look at that word. No, I don't. Not a thing. So 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 wait, because so Hadrian, do you watch your own? Have you watched your own porn like now? Like professional porn? No. I, really? I edit, cut. Edit. Cut. M- done. That's it. It is so clinical and dry to me. I just, it has no effect on me at all. My own porn. And I don't. I would not just watch it second for second. All I right, mean, this so, is a suggestion. It's not a requirement. This is just a suggestion. Yeah. So, because some people so, might but, be okay with that. I so now trust I me. Have the one porn I did, question. I did watch and analyzed and did. And thought of everything that I did wrong. Yeah, I didn't have a blue pill. That's been another point. That's a, another matter altogether. I think I think that would take away from the intercommunication that's supposed to occur during sex, and that's one of the effects I think porn does have is that it disrupts the 
I'm blowing you. Please do something to let me know when I'm doing something right or wrong. Instead of somebody going, you've been hurting me for like five minutes. I'm like, well, where was an ouch or a smack or a push or a wilt? It's something like that to help me instead of like saying, no, right. do it better. So right. I think that robs the communication aspect of it. I mean, yeah, the visual, you can totally see some things, but you can make sex better if you do it in the moment. You know, mm -hmm. you really, I've, I've, I've had so many one night stands that I believe you need to get it right in that moment you don't get a second shot you need that to, if you're gonna right face, roll, face roll first that shit right there oh yeah totally sex in the moment sex in the experience it's gonna you're gonna like it's gonna you're you're both experiencing it, experiencing it together and whatever experience you have before then or after then kind of is some in some cases not irrelevant but just is not necessary in this moment like you know how to do certain things because you've done them before. Like, I know this trick that I do with my tongue that usually nine times out of ten gets the guy to, like, like give me a guttural, like, moan or sensation to know that he's really enjoying it. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to do it this time. Oh, it he did nothing. Like, okay, well, then I don't know what's going on with you, but I'm going to try to do something else. Like, I'm going to, like, do this. Or if you, like, in the moment you're you're experiencing it, and you will know, I feel you will feel how things are going. You don't necessarily need audio, maybe sometimes audio cues, but you don't necessarily need a, like you, like you said, Hadrian, like I don't like the whole, like like five minutes later, we're now talking about it and you're like, oh, by the way, when you were doing that thing to me, like I didn't like yeah. that. I'm like, because like, I, don't, I won't remember anyway. I mean. Like what I, was I, I doing? <laughs> If I'm really in the zone, I'm not going to record that shit. I'm just, I'm enjoying, I'm enjoying, well, I'm scrolling. <laughs> so here's, here's what I want to say. Jeff's offering of, of an idea is if yeah. people want to see how they perform and get better, right. that is one option. And what I'm sorry, I, Jeff. I wasn't, it's I just was, review yeah, the replay is all I'm saying. Right. No, you're absolutely right. But I think that there's, a, there's an extreme to that that can, people can, can overanalyze, especially if you're younger and not actually had any physical contact yet. You might think that the visual is all there is to go on before yeah. you get a chance to connect with people. And yes, Jeff, I was, also, Jeff, I was also being silly. <laughs> physical contact before you discovered porn. Oh no 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 Right. right. I, I mean, I think that I think that's one thing. Um, I want to come back to something that Hadrian had said. But David, you said they had a second question uh, for Hadrian. Mm -hmm. Do you remember what your second question oh, was? Oh, oh. So just the the like. So do you watch your X two videos and Twitter stuff? And mm -hmm. so you don't watch anything. Post you, it, but I don't watch you it. post it, but you don't watch it. Okay. Oh, that's, I think that's just. I, th I think oh. I quit. I did find that so early as some level of narcissism. I couldn't allow myself to indulge in. Not that I'm not connected in some way, but I just can't. I just can't connect with myself. Now I jerk off in front of a mirror. I can be in the moment, and enjoy that. I can make love to myself. That's not a problem. But I can't make love with myself. Like watching yourself. Okay, you can't be temporary well, uh, or temporally displaced. Well, but I mean that's. But I think what he is I'm, talking I about get, is I get so into my own head. Right. Hadrian doesn't have a narcissistic like like love button trigger like. There's nothing about him that he finds himself erotic, like to watch after the fact and and and, and really be self obsessed, I guess, about it in that way, mm. which is refreshing, yeah. actually. I, I think. There's these wonderful popper videos on XTube and Pornhub. There's a few different places the guy posts them. They're they're wonderful and they're a lot of fun. But um, I don't watch them. But, um, <laughs> there, but I was watching one one time and I'm like, okay, this is really good porn at least. And I'm looking through it. I'm looking through it. I'm like, oh, this is really fucking hot. Look at this chubby guy getting blown. And it zooms out and I'm like. Fuck, it's me. <laughs> <laughs> I was so mad. I was like, I like. Wow. <laughs> it took you out of it. That's so it good. Totally that, me it's a thing. Like, that I, just, is, I, just, I just don't enjoy that. That's kind of very fun to know. Sorry. I'm just, it's one of the little things. Sorry. It's just, you know, one of the little nuggets. Just to, file like, that away. File it away. Because it's like. Cause that's, yeah. So what I'm hearing is. For the plot of the reunion between Hadrian and John Thomas, Hadrian will not be watching their original scene together with the massage table <laughs> to make that magic happen again, like in a fantasy just gonna, or whatever. It's just going to happen as it happens. It's not going right. to be like that. So unless the director <clears throat> um, 
uh, knows can make it like a kind of shot for shot remake or whatever, or the editor oh, can make it a shot for shot. What? Porn yeah. is edited. You know that fuck. You know the fuck about that. Can make it some way like, like make it that way. It's it's not going to happen exactly the way it happened. No. No. So like I've rewritten the scene from for myself. I I've now realized that it's going to be John Thomas watching the old video of him and Hadrian together, having like a wank of a, of a fond memory of that. And somehow either it's going to be kind of a dream sequence and Hadrian comes into it and he fantasizes the whole thing. Now that they're older. And okay. what? I don't know where we're at right now. <laughs> we're talking about you and John Thomas hooking back up again. Okay, like, okay. <laughs> personally, I would prefer, prefer him and uh, uh, Mike Veniscup. So that is good. Yeah, I, I think we're all retired. I think, the, or at least two of us are. So yeah, well, yeah, true. But we can't. Uh, we have the fantasy. To, to, of don't, course, yes. <laughs> I encourage that. I love good fantasy. Good lord. Just so yeah, wanna, just having having this like like the 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 scene starts off with you two just walking down uh, down a be- beach and just passing each other and you see each other's eyes again and then you have a flashback to the pr- one of the previous scenes maybe in uh, uh, bear voyage too oh and then God. then all of a sudden you grab each other and you kiss and then you drag off into to a room and fuck We were talking about what porn does to us. <laughs> <laughs> well, and here, and here we us, are. What do we know? Porn has given us wild imaginative things. Like, I want to go to the live chat because um, Din Din Mushi cracked me up while y'all were, like, talking back and forth and had this amazing post that said, Girl, you will not catch my virgin ass on somebody's video. And... I think that's good. Like, you need to know where your limits are. If you don't want to be on film, don't be on film. Fact. I'm, I'm of the opinion there are two types of videos I record. There are things that are recorded on an old school camera that has an SD card and no Wi-Fi, no other way to connect to it. And there's that. That's the private stash in the bedroom with me and Bailey. And then there's the the anything I do on my phone, I don't care. It can be anywhere it wants to be. But I, I'm, that's my rule of thumb. If I don't want it on the internet, don't record on a device connected to the internet. Uh-huh. Which goes back to that recent conversation, not to get into this necessarily, but we are. So on The View, Whoopi Goldberg talked about this very issue because there was some celebrity apparently who had like made a sexy video or something she loaded it to the cloud someone hacked her account then she was all upset about it Whoopi was like you have no right to be upset and so the ladies at the table are having this back and forth and Whoopi was like sorry if you don't want it to get out of the world don't make it yeah and that's that's something important that porn has taught us because the first thing people started wanting to secure on their newly minted gateway computer that they just got with the, the replaceable candy colored plates to match the iMac. Um, <laughs> although, all those, the first thing that those mostly men in those households who got those computers learned how to secure was the porn. I know mm-hmm. because I used to run an ad in the back of et cetera magazine in Atlanta that said, I will help, you know, if, do you know, do you know your porn is secure? Do you know, can you, can you know how, to, know how to lock it down? And I would, all I would do is sell them a little pamphlet for like 20 or 25 bucks. I'd come by, some of these guys were hot and I got some hookups out of it. <laughs> uh, you guys remember that old eighties film? What was it called? Uh, Lover Boy about the guy who delivered extra anchovy pizzas and got laid. It was my fantasy come true. I got to live that, but as a computer. Yes, bit. <laughs> wow. A porn security I was my expert. Porn life without any cameras involved, but, but hey, no, I, would, I would. I've given this piece of paper that told them how to encrypt files in Windows or what applications to use. Huh. And that's, that was a language that people were trying to learn to, to secure their porn. There was still a shame and that sort of thing. Now, they, nowadays, they don't have to worry about it. The husband has his own computer. We're at that stage, I think, at the, now, or their own phone. Yeah. But oh, there right. was a time where when it was a family computer, people had to learn how to lock down their shit. Right. Now everybody pretty much has their own device. So. Yeah, but, the, now. but often I think the first language of security that people, Americans started, people with computers started learning about was learning how to secure the really sensitive, shameful stuff that they had digitized. And that right. would be porn. Right. So I want to circle back to what Owen brought up that Hadrian, you had said that I think is definitely like something that people need to understand because I don't disagree with it. And you had said that porn can interrupt body communication, that because you were taking in whatever the medium is, it limits you like it's like it's no matter what, even if it was virtual reality, it's still not the real deal. 
End of story. It's manufactured in some way, shape, or form. Right. There, there is a language of porn, just like there's a language of the old west that we got from Hollywood. The, you know, the the cowboy and the John Wayne type and the rough and shooter. That a, a lot of that's the Marlboro Man. Even all that's made up shit. Um, porn has created this. You know, we talked. We briefly talked about fantasy. It's created this construct of what porn really is. The way your body is supposed to move, which is all advantageous to the camera. It's not advantageous to real sex. So sometimes guys, you know, you see these these people who grab people and move them in these impossible positions. I'm like, who are you doing that position for? Nobody's watching you from the corner where the camera would be. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a language that goes with porn. And you, you yeah. mentioned something. You mentioned something a minute ago, uh, Gary. I wanted to mention was that um, the first time you blew someone, they thought you were you were already experienced. I when I was 18 and I was going to glory hole, some guys thought I was old. I was like, I would, they, they read me as 18 or 19 or young. And they like, Oh, he probably doesn't know what the fuck he's doing. When I went down on, they're like, Oh, so I used, I was like, I wanted to blow them first. Like so let them know, Hey, we're in pro mode. I'm not here to fuck around. We're not, I'm not level five. I'm level 35. Let's go. <laughs> so um, that was my way of letting people know, Hey, you feel this mouth. I know what I'm doing. So that's how I got into, got to more advanced guys. So I use that. And also there's, Porn also has sounds in it. So uh, one of my favorite one is when you're blowing someone that that uh, sound or gagging on it, that, that, that you know that thing people would do. That's totally made up in freaking porn. And I would use that to let people know, hey, get pornographic on me, go hard, let's go. I would those those are things you use to cue people in to say, let's reenact whatever dirty scene you have because I am doing this thing or rubbing you or touching you in a certain way that triggers you to use that scene information. Like there's some things that just go together. Oh, like oh my god! Around. Yeah, that means we want to fuck. I'm a uh-huh. top. I'm a top. Sorry. Right. <laughs> top in the video never pays attention to the bottom's dick. If it's a real hardcore topping, you know, scene. Yep. And probably one of my biggest annoyances. Yeah. Right. The bottom has a dick. Pay attention to it. Absolutely. So that, you know, it's funny. That's one of the negative things porn has taught us as far as language. I'm sorry, Dean. No, 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 no. That's the thing. Like, those are things like, like I've learned through porn and have avoided, you know, like there's another person, there's another body in this situation, whether they're getting fucked or not. Like there's someone there and their body needs attention as well. Like you can do things to them or with them so that they can enjoy the moment too. Um, Jim. So So here's the thing I want to say while David's, uh, while David's man is distracting him with inappropriateness. So the the thing is, is that like I've come to understand and learn that not all bottoms are triggered. And by triggered, mm-hmm. I mean like that insertion immediately is an erect penis or turns mm-hmm. them on or get you know gets them going or whatever. But I for me, if I see a bottom and he's, you know, having his ass played with and his hole, and he gets erect, porn taught me, like, that that's the the mutualness, like, that we're all in this together, as mm-hmm. opposed to someone being used, like, as just an object to, you know, whatever yeah, at that yeah. moment. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That is one of the things I do remember specifically, like, that whole, like, bottoms don't, bottoms are there to be used, and then everything's done and they just walk the top walks away and that's it. I'm like, no, I can't. No. Well, and I remember for the longest time that like men penetrated men penetrated. Mm -hmm. Like that was a thing. And that, you know, the other was just the receptacle and it was quite a while. And I remember like being thrown off when I would see someone who was receiving and being dominant, like taking some guy. Right, taking some kind of control because I was like, "Whoa, what's that about?" Like, he's just not taking it, quote unquote. Like, he's he's not only being a willing participant, like he's at least even with the other individual in terms of what's happening, if not like commanding the situation, Mm -hmm. fashion. Well, I also thought porn created this. There was a dark side to that too, where I thought porn, this in my read of it, created this top or bottom. Thing where mm. the people who played tops consistently played the tops, and the people who, but and that put this in my mind oh, you have to be either or, or if you change, it has to be a big deal. And I saw that in some of the some of the Gen Xers I was hanging out with, you know, they were they were 
in their twenties and thirties, and they're like, "Oh, I'm 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 a bottom now, and I'm going to be a, you know." They, they, it was like a thing; they would just suddenly become that way. And I feel like that's faded out as the younger generations take porn less literally, or people are just being more versatile. I think over the last ten years, and yeah. topping and bottoming is a is a win thing. Like I say, I'm a top. That means tonight or right now or at this moment when I'm interacting with you. You know what yeah. they did this this interaction going to? It's temporal. They, mm-hmm. they, basically, they we've evolved to get rid of the binary of top mm-hmm. and bottom. Yeah, Man, well, there's so but, many things that that for the longest time we're we're all very binary: male, female, top, mm-hmm. bottom, uh, straight, gay. You're either straight or you're gay. Bisexual? Right. What's that? Um, that it, now everything is really on a spectrum, where a lot of people aren't necessarily top or bottom. They're really more versatile. They just tend towards one side, or they don't or something. fuck at all. No. I really like the phrase, well, yeah. hmm? I really like the phrase power versatile lately. I've been hearing that a little more. Really interesting. Like huh. Why do either world that. You do both of the same set? You could that, they could take a cock like a, a champ and they can give like a champ. I'll, I'm I'm just gonna say it this way, Hadrian. That hasn't made it to the East Coast yet. <laughs> How shit starts on the West Coast and works its way across the nation. Um, but yeah, I, I find that interesting. I, I found, I mean, I went through a number of years where I was embarrassed about the fact that I figured out that I was a bottom. So I just wouldn't list my role on my profiles online or anything. Like on 411, I would not say that I was bottom. And you had the someone ask, called. Ask me option checked. Right. Someone, someone called me out on it and it was like, What's the big deal about like being afraid of being a bottom or whatever? But I had absorbed this messaging that I am just to be used. And mm-hmm. given my control issues, I was like, no, no, like that's that, that's not how I play. Like I'm not just <laughs> I'm just not some receptacle for you, like with yeah. with disconnection. That's not how this works. So that was how I handled that. Um but I think that we we got a lot of different messaging from things mm-hmm. whether it was meant to be or not necessarily the case so yeah. like hadrian you had said about like the sounds in porn and um one of the people in the live chat had said you know that these sounds that hadrian was talking about might be amplified or heightened in porn um but they are real and not made up and i don't think hadrian you meant like that they don't exist at all but in porn because it is such a medium of platform especially when you're watching it in film which mm-hmm. is not really film anymore. You know what I mean? Since yeah. it's recorded and then played back, especially when it's produced, I think there's a whole amplification aspect to it. Yes. Because, yeah. because the reality is sex is not loud. It can be loud, but it's mm-hmm. not necessarily. It actually like very in real loud. life, in real right. life, uh, in, in porn, uh, it's, uh, 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 in real life. It's like, uh, Where do I start? (laughs) Uh oh. (laughs) I've been been in production of porn, and I can tell you stuff like bear film stuff. I don't think they do a lot of changing of editing unless they're trying to cover up what the director's saying. But I can tell you, working for Corbin Fisher, which was really was was really classic muscle porn, um, they have that mic on a boom, and they are in that. They are like, hey, we want to hear every squishy bit there is in there, and they totally edit it. Those those the deep throating sounds, everything you hear, that's totally dubbed and looped. They they create the fantasy of a lot of it because that girl can't do that every single time. She she's got to, and they won't do it every. They're like, I'll do it once or twice so you can get the sound, but the rest of it I'm going to do normal. That's what they that's what they say, and then they loop it in. So they totally do that. Yeah, these, yeah. Are, these are ladies. These are really high end, really high end prom, porn stars aren't doing that shit anymore. Yeah, well, and, I mean, I, and that's not just an audio loop. I mean, how many times have we watched porn oh, and been like, uh, didn't I just see that pic that 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 penis right. in that? area oh, before they did not that. see the, the videos yeah god oh so <laughs> the magic of porn is magic <laughs> yeah i i, I that it does not exist magic. <laughs> <laughs> like one of the, like there are things so okay so like i i, I totally understand and ref, you understand that there's magic the magic of porn because i've i've experienced it so someone so someone who has watched you're, a lot you're, of porn you're the one who's professional you have practically every single Bear Films movie. We understand. Okay. I don't have every Bear Films movie. 
I stopped like years ago. <laughs> you only had the first few seasons. They, they make films. <laughs> yeah. When they were making films and making DVDs and instead of individual anyway. Anyway, that's that's a whole other story. I'm not gonna go into that. Anyway, um I, I I so someone who has watched a lot of porn, I see that often. And worst part for me is I tend to see the edits. Like I can since I've watched so much of it, I can see the editing. Yeah. Like I can see like I just saw that scene. Like and I so I'm seeing like the loop going back. Like I'm seeing it. Um I am seeing or hearing the sounds that are being replayed. I'm hearing the vo- vocals that are obviously covering up um something or some sound. I have and I have heard porns where they didn't quite cover the voices up enough. Right. Um, I have seen the quote unquote amateur porn that they have out there that um, is clearly like we just filmed this scene and we didn't want to put it in like a real like one of the main porns, so we're just gonna throw it on this amateur porn. I was actually talking about this I think a couple of weeks ago. There's a um one of my like favorite and worst ones of these, there's a video, um, I think it's Amateur Bears 3 from Bear Films. There's a scene between Don James and this other guy, and it is very, very obvious that he is not fucking this guy. That they oh. are not actually fucking. And and it is like it is painfully obvious. Like to the point where I can't watch the scene and get aroused because I they are clearly acting because there is no fucking going on there's a lot of like pounding but it's there's no nothing i mean they may have gotten a couple of it a couple of times to then throw in there as part of the edit which they did several times in the same scene or same like moment a few times in this porn but i i you know that's the thing i noticed it enough to where it's like like i'm kind of mad almost because it just it takes really really it took me out of the you it may, took me out of, yeah. I, I, so you noticed I, it I couldn't so much tell. Took you out. Yeah. yeah, it took me out of the like fantasy, the scene of it. Like it took me so far out of it that I can't really watch it anymore. Oh, no, you know, not... I always thought porn had this opposite effect on me, sort of, because I had seen the inside of so many fucking Motel Six hotel rooms, those <laughs> awful drapes and those terrible bed sheets, and the Holiday Inns and everything else. Every porn, every porn was shot in one. It seemed like for a while, and that when I walked into one, I just wasn't surprised at it being outdated and gross. Everyone, I think that everybody suddenly just started getting, getting used to gross hotel rooms because they'd seen it in porn so much. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. That's you, got, you don't want to break out the black light. Porn, right. Porn desensitizes you to some of the more visceral aspects of porn too. They get those audio sounds and they, and they, but then they cover it up with just a little bit of music. So you, you hear the big sounds, but the, the little faint ones aren't there. But you're seeing it all occurring too, and it helps yeah. people aren't shocked by the first time they commit a sexual act. Because I can imagine that for someone who had never seen porn, like think someone from like the 1700s, having sex with a woman's vagina was fucking scary enough. Much less thinking <laughs> about some rear action. Mm-hmm. And see, what I find interesting is like, so I follow on uh, online on Twitter a well, he's still in the adult film industry today and does like directing uh, filming, but he posted like some some shots from like a film recently that they were making but they're all of him filming so he's like laying on the floor like leaning like smushed into the corner like i mean he's doing he's trying to show like y'all get off to this shit but you have to realize like what it takes to make the fantasy happen like yeah basically the takeaway especially for me is the camera angles ain't real like yeah like unless you are like you know and involved in a big pile of bodies, it is not likely that you're going to see exactly that kind of like angle of the human body or two bodies together, you know, mm-hmm. kind of thing where everybody's just piled in like in a, in a big, you know, mess of some sort. So I think that that's another thing that I find interesting because there's a couple on Xtube that I recently started following that are young and one of them's very playful. He's kind of more the cub of, of the couple and, and the other one is like a bear, but they're both like in their 20s, but they've been doing some risque things. So like they've been <laughs> playing in like retail stores and they like uh, blew each other like in a changing room. And then recently they like posted a video where they fucked in their neighbor's apartment while they were dog sitting while the neighbor <laughs> was gone. Like, but it's kind of cute because 
what's what is more cute about it, so to speak. I mean, it's, it's don't get me wrong, it's hot, but what's cute about it is like they're trying to figure out like where to put the phone and the thing and like figure out the other stuff because they're being conscious of the fact that they're being filmed. And they don't want people to be like, you know, the least you could do is get the frame right or, you know, or the focus or whatever. Right. And yet at the same time, there's a part of me that's like, but that's what we've done to ourselves. Mm-hmm. Like, that's what we've taught ourselves is that kind of stuff. I find it more interesting when someone just kind of sets it up and walks away. You know what I mean? Like, does it? I don't care about the fact that it's got to be zoomed in and focused and blah, blah, blah. Like, there's an aspect of lighting, but... You know, like I, I much more appreciate the whole linearness of the scene. So yeah, maybe it's eighteen minutes long, and the real action is only three minutes and fifty seconds. But at least I don't feel it's produced mm-hmm. as I'm watching it. Like it's, yeah. it's much more of the realistic content. And that's that's something that's occurred. I don't think that we, and I, I don't mean to say we as an as an old person at forty, thinking back to when we were in our twenties and discovering, holy shit, we can buy an Intel webcam for fifty bucks, plug it into our computer, and record a video of ourselves in three twenty pixel jacking off, Ooh. and post it on a news group or something like that. I mean, we we that was mind blowing. Or I see you too, and I speak. I and, <laughs> and, there was, and there was a red flag with those. If you remember those chat platforms, is that people were starting to set up these array of lights around their computers and were using like uh, mascara to fill in their beards and chest hair so they could look as hot as possible on these damn cameras. And I was, they were overproducing themselves for something that was supposed to happen. I always thought that when we, when, when I was posting my own stuff on the internet and I was posting, I was doing porn, I thought I was saying, hey, you too can have sex like a porn star. Go do that. Use what, I'm, we'll use what we're doing here and go do that and go have better sex. I don't think we anticipated that people would start using only start having sex and porn. I don't think we anticipated that because it seems like that there's this extreme, there's this push towards where everything is so overproduced, even the porn, and so much that sex is only produced. People are mm-hmm. there's these only fans and these, and I'm not saying that's the only sex they're having, but there's at the at the rate I'm seeing some of these people produce, I'm like every time you come, that's on camera. That's a right. lot, right? Yeah. That's so weird to me. Like I've I've been like so I don't I, I will own and this is me personally. I I have not been a fan of all of these like only fans and just for fans and all these things that come out. Like if you're a porn like if you I'll put it like this. If you're a porn star and you're doing it and I kind of like I'm like okay, that's 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 maybe one thing cuz you're just trying to sell your brand for lack of a better term. But like Joe Smo, like random guy, regular guy kind of doing his own thing, like I mean maybe but like I'm not gonna drop ten dollars to see your video of you like jerking off because you happen to have a just for fans account or whatever. Like I don't I don't I don't see the appeal like most of the time. In some ways I do, but some ways I don't. And I think a part of it, I hate to say it, is probably because my the mind and mental thing about porn is that I think I like some of the produced stuff, not overly produced, but just like the regular produced stuff. I like the story. I like to know what's going on, even though it was a very flimsy, awful storyline of like the the piece of delivery guy and the art of cable guy, like whatever. Like at least there's something there to kind of grab my attention. That so, that mild story, just yeah. to get to the point of the changeover, instead but, of just two guys standing there and they just start kissing, take it off their clothes and having sex. Like, I, I think watch where, where in your brain does porn live? Does porn live in way of life or does porn live in that's a fantasy? And I, I think you and me, Damon, it sounds like you and I have it firmly placed that porn is fantasy. It's supposed to be mm-hmm. a story being told. It's not, yeah. is this I'm not, that's not something that's inspired. <laughs> this is just fantasy. We can't pay for the rights. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, and that's kind of, that's kind of where I would yeah, that's kind of where I'm at. Like I think it's like the fantasy where don't get me wrong, like watching a video of like Hadrian jerking off or you know doing whatever, like totally cool with that, but that could also be just because I maybe I know you from like your videos and stuff. So maybe that's it. But I just need watch- jack up material. I, I can watch those and I'm fine with watching those for free. But like if I'm going to spend, put money down, like, yeah, that's it. I think that's what it is. Like if I'm going to put money down to watch something of you, I kind of want more than just you sitting in a corner or sitting your camera in the corner and jerking off. Because right. I can get that on XTube like well, every day. Well, 
but, and we, that really brings up a good point though that like there's a, there's a commodity scale like what is what is something worth what yeah. is the value in it and unfortunately adult entertainment has dropped significantly since the time in which we first learned about it in terms of production costs and what people are willing to pay for it i have i have a chatterbait account i don't hardly ever pay for nothing like <laughs> that's just the reality of it so for me the just for fans the only fans all the rest of that i'm like why like, especially when some of y'all do have your own Chatterbait account, and I'll catch you on there. Like, <laughs> like, come on. Like, and that's, and, and I'm not saying it's right or it's wrong. It's just the lay of the land now. Like, mm -hmm. if you really want something and people are into it, either they're really into you or what you do. And a part of what you do is like production value and all the rest yeah. of that. You know, yeah. like, because like Dave and saying, if I'm going to put my coin down, it better be worth it. Yeah, like I'll, I'll, and again, I'll keep saying it because you're here, Hadrian. Um, yes, <laughs> had you actually monetized, say, your just for fans account, I probably would have considered, but only because I know enough of seeing your videos over time that I would enjoy what you put out there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And, we know and you I, have I, quality. I it just, I just, I, it was just there was some luridness I just couldn't engage in. I just, I don't know what it was. I just. Well, if There's you're all about the fan out there already, I feel like, well, why now? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, also, I think for I'm, I'm, I hate to say, but I think like for you, like there's a, you, like you said, this this is not really once you start adding a to me the monetary like aspect to it and kind of then it starts becoming you may overthink it. I think you and I are probably going to overthink it. Like I want the video, like I want it to be perfect because people are going to be paying for it essentially. I, I also don't, and I, I don't think that people are thinking about the bigger picture of porn and what's going on to this industry and what the, you know, we, the commodification of porn is absolutely the best term for it. And what is, what it's done is that the, the main porn producers have lost all their power. I, right here in Universal City, right here in, in LA, I lived up the street from Vivid Entertainment Plaza where Vivid Entertainment was. And it was famous because it was run by women, or at least the, the major producers and directors were, were women. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And it was a it was a great suit of years, and they did it. They finally sold it. it. You know, they've been there for a long time, and they just don't have enough money to maintain the building anymore. Um, but porn has been, and it, and it's all occurring between us as more of a a trade or a I don't know. It's 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 not what it was. There's no industry titans anymore. Yeah, there's Pornhub and a few others that still have some money and a little bit of of sway, but um, there's no there's no major champions. There's no Larry. Uh, what was his name? Larry Flint. There's, mm -hmm. there's no Larry, or there's no major pariahs that are leading the charge on this First Amendment capability that we have, mm -hmm. and I'm worried about the change in the legal landscape of what we've done to porn. Yeah, we don't have these times anymore. We're just, it's just us as individuals training, and I assure you, politicians do not see the people as a threat. They see corporations and businesses and, and business lobbies as threats, but the the majority of people who are making porn. Um, on the internet and just putting it up, whether they're putting it on just for fans and making money, more power to them, or they're just posting it for free on Twitter or, or X2. Um, they don't recognize that there's a there's a danger to how we're being boxed in right now. We've lost Tumblr, you know, quote unquote. I hear there's something going on there that is coming back. I've heard yeah. uh, uh, there's other, but mostly porn is being pushed out of the main. Uh, you can't porn cannot be a part of your public persona is what Facebook said to us a few years ago. Even mm -hmm. Steve Jobs, you know. Rest his soul and all that, but he said something like "freedom from porn" is what he wanted on the iPhone, and I wish he hadn't. I, I think that's a, a decision he shouldn't have. He should. He didn't. He he took too much liberty in making that decision for the platform. But I think that the way that porn has been boxed in out of certain ecosystems and invalid pieces of expression, even Twitter now they changed the policy a few weeks ago. You can't have a dick pic or anything lewd in your profile pic anymore, and I think that's common sense. But it had been that way for a long, long time, and that flags that they're looking at those policies and they're mm -hmm. looking at the change. And I think they're going to try to box in porn just like Tumblr did. Mm -hmm. um, the, the, the AI technology that scans images and notices that it's porn is getting faster and better. I was exchanging photos with someone on Instagram, uh, direct messages, and it flagged the photos. This is this is this might be inappropriate. I'm like, are you fuck? This is a direct message, a one to one communication. And you're scanning this photo. Because it was, I think it scanned it and saw it. It was a dick pic. I, I have major concerns about where, how the commoditization and the, and the way that we're all engaging, point that we are, 
as still a shameful act and not something that's empowering and it's not a, a liberated movement. And we're not adopting that. And we're thinking that porn is something to aspire to better is porn is supposed to inspire us to be better people sexually. Mm. I think we're taking the wrong message from porn that it's not no, they, there are kids that think, Oh, I want to do porn. Cause I want to make money. I tell, I tell a kid a week that wants to contact me on Twitter and say, I want to do porn and make money. I'm like, kid, I hate to be breaking it to you. Like that ain't a thing. Uh, you got maybe two people who are, who are, who are making bread. Uh, making porn these and bear porn especially there's maybe two maybe three mm-hmm. so it's i think that we do and the way that porn has changed us and the way we're interacting with things is endangering that same medium and i think that uh politicians will look to box it in and corporations are looking to box it in and they just mm-hmm. don't want what porn means anymore if you want to do porn it's more for extra cash <laughs> your day job. Well, I mean, I, as a relative point, it's like, you know, the the whole um, Lyft Uber, you know, ecosystems, when they launched, it was meant to be additional supplemental income. And people took the platform and ran with it and was like, well, I'm gonna make a full time thing of it. Yeah. Same thing happened with porn. In the in the beginning, it was not people making careers. It was just making film and they got paid a couple bucks for it or whatever. And then we've seen the whole reversal now where we've taken it away from, as Hadrian, you said about like the Titans, there are no like big houses anymore, but that's because the power came to us on an individual scale. I now own computers with software that can edit. I can buy my own lighting, my own cameras, my own microphones, the whole shebang. So I don't need someone else to give it to me when I can produce it myself. But that also proves the difficulty because now millions of people are producers. Mm-hmm. Well, the economy is still the same. A dollar is a dollar is a dollar is a dollar. Like so, there's yeah. only so much to go around. Mil- so if millions of people more make per day, <laughs> right? If millions of people make the content versus thousands before, there's not just you know it's just not going to work the same. Yeah, it's not the, it's not the same. Agreed. And and I think that that's you know unfortunate. And it also, I can it can have some big, you know, factors on people because I think some people are like, oh, I want to do adult film, I want to start my own channel, blah 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 blah, and then it kind of doesn't work, kind of doesn't take off. I mm-hmm. hope that you have like an effective, you know, uh, set of, you know, sh- structure in your life that you can go to therapy, that you can like talk to friends, chosen family, direct family, whoever, to support you through that whole experience. Because now I would be more concerned about those that like try to start something and it just doesn't work. And then the after effects of all that, you know, mm-hmm. to me it's, it's the same as the selfie culture of posting all this stuff about yourself and then, well, people don't like it and they don't love it and blah, 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 you know? And like, I'm more inclined now to like or heart or love things that I see because I'm like, this is a real person who's really putting themselves out there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Of those people, the, the, when I when I see when you're, I mean, I, I I make fun of some things, but there are some things that really are they are so authentic, and people are just they really are putting themselves out there, and you can see that they are being very unashamed of, who, of what they are and mm-hmm. who they can be, and they want to aspire to more, and they they need that heart, they need that they need that love to to know that they're appreciated, and I I really go for that a lot, mm-hmm. and I think that's what one thing that we probably learn from porn is the whole disconnection issue when we first learned of it and started with it there was there was no feedback loop like yeah. the only the only feedback loop was that more videos sold or more publication more issues sold or something or like letters to the editor requested that that bottle that was about it like there was the only way it worked but it was also very much in this like shifted situation where there were so few at the top with such a large audience base and now we've equated it or flipped the whole thing where mm-hmm. now there's a vast amount of people who like can, you know, basically, you know, support each other and do things in that case. So that's the one thing about the whole Tumblr fallout and the where we are with Twitter currently. For me, Twitter is like old Tumblr back in the day where I'm seeing specifically kind of the stuff that I want to see mostly. And I'm seeing more and more people like post other people. Like I saw an account the other day where this guy was like, okay, so I decided to put my first like physical picture of me out there and all these people are like you know resharing it and, and harding and stuff and there was a part of me that was like wow like that really speaks a lot about a person that they felt 
that they got to a point in that social medium, like that they were willing to put a picture of themselves out there for people to like respond to that, you know, mm-hmm. without it. And it, to me, it wasn't like a whole, that, would, that was an empowering thing for them. Or do you think they felt pressured? No, I think they felt, I think they felt I'm going to give it a try and see what happens. Okay. And there's an authenticity to that. I think that people responded to, I mean, sure. Some people were probably like, yeah, retweet. You know, <laughs> be that as it may, <laughs> but you know, I, I, that's the stuff I like more of the power that we have now with technology and that kind of stuff. And hopefully we continue that trend as opposed to, I guess, repeating rinse and repeating what we've done in the past mm-hmm. that we, that we, you know, kind of um, put people up on pedestals and then that's all we got to work with. So to speak. That sounds like something that would be great for another show. <laughs> so Is guess that what, folks? End? That's the end of this part of this episode. Uh, there's plenty of ways to contact us. You can pop over to our website, comesoutloud.com. Shoot us an email at comesoutloud at gmail.com. Leave us a voicemail, sexy or otherwise, at 361 well Talk. That's 361-265-8255. You can find us on various social media outlets, including Instagram, Facebook, Tumblr, Twitter, and, of course, right here on YouTube. Uh, you can also join our entourage chat at tinyworld.com slash telegram dash col. Uh, if you would like to know when we're going to record this so you can see uh, Daddy Hadrian's pretty face. Um, you can uh, follow our calendar at tinyurl.com slash calendar dash col. Again, that only works on computers to do that, but once you got it subscribed, you should be able to access it on your Google Calendar on your phone. Uh, you can get uh, some merchandise, such as this uh, version 3 logo uh, t-shirt that I am wearing, and I think I'm the only one wearing col merchandise today, but hey, whatever. Wait. Oh, oh yeah. No, you've got yes. Bruiser. No, no, well, no, I was, no, no. I... <laughs> My hat's right here. I'm just not wearing it because it's hot right now. <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyways, <laughs> that's a zazzle.com slash comes out loud. Uh, we also appreciate our patrons at patreon.com slash comes out loud. So please, if you would like to subscribe to us there, uh, you can uh, rate us on iTunes, subscribe to us through Google Play Podcasts, or subscribe to us on Spotify as well find me anywhere in the internet as box type box puppy box cub box something or other um if you wish to um, find me or locate me you can find me as theater cub 79 on most bear related sites and facebook or you can find me as pup underscore umbra on twitter if you would like to get in touch with me pretty much look me up anywhere online as gare 73 and hadrian where would people find you if they want to reach can, out and get in touch you can find me at the show.com and with that, say good night, everybody. Good night, everyone. <laughs> Have a good. This is uh-huh. this is what happens when you share your screen. Because <laughs> here's the dumb thing about Skype right now is, in order to share audio from your computer, so I can you know send the the, the sounds over to you guys, I have to share my screen as well. And there isn't an option just to share the audio, which I think would probably like save on bandwidth and such like that. It might be a little bit easier. And the thing is, the previous version of uh, Skype 
had that option. Mm. So, not really, so much anymore. Yeah. Well, it's 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 huh. dumb. It's it's yeah. super dumb. It's okay. Um, so, ooh, you know, porn and Tumblr or Twitter, excuse me, got distracted right near the end. Like, <laughs> like oh, so I apologize for that. You pulled up porn while we were talking about porn? How Meta. dare you? 